All right, so I've got one of them tore down. You can see, same generic. It is a DPS model. This is the DPS 5005 with the rotary, the blah, 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 broken rotary encoder knob that would press randomly as you turn it. Um, as far as pulling them out of the plastic package or the mounting, first you pull off the rooting corridor, which interesting how it has a little nut in there. Actually, the 30V 12 amp has a little kind of like plastic spacer, but this actually has a nut in it. Um, but yeah, it's just a kind of cob sort of thing. It goes on and then you gently pry up each of these little prongs that hold on to the uh, PCB there and then yeah it just kind of pops out this pushes out too but you'd have to pop that through those too um, yeah it's just kind of plastic there um, so yeah, let's look at what one of these is made of. Um, so, whoop, that's upside down. So, there you are, you got a pretty standard little LCD panel. That has little wire ribbons that go under there. It looks like they're soldered on, actually. Let me just confirm. Yeah, I'd say that's soldered on. Um, but very minimal wire count. And as you can see, let me get some good light. It's got a sort of little header there. Four, two by four header that joins the bottom of the PCB that is on the LCD to the main main board, motherboard, and yeah, you've got your rotary encoder, um, on off button, and then the three mode buttons, some pretty decent little standoffs with bolts, which just hold it off from the front of the package, and hold it in place, and then so this is kind of made of two different boards here. This main motherboard here, which includes the main input socket, which is actually removable, which is actually a nice feature that I like. Where you just pop this off, it plugs in there, and then you can muck about with screwing wires on and off. So that way, if you actually had these in a panel, you can pull out the wire, uh, put new wires into it, instead of trying to unscrew everything while it's mounted in the panel and all crazy. So yeah, that's a nice feature. But if, as I remove that, you can see right there Focus. You can see the little current shunt that goes up and down and back up and then back down. Uh, so yeah, that's monitoring the uh, voltage drop from the return of the, well, I think that's the output side and that's the input side, positive, negative, negative, positive. Um, so that's the positive output, and that's the return of the output. So negative goes through that current shunt and back. Um, you see this little solid capacitor, 220 50 volt, as this is the 50 volt model. So uh, I guess because these are all 50 volt, no, no. These are actually 63 volt capacitors. 
whereas that's only a 50 volt. Interesting. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's got two more little um, two by four headers. One's kind of for the input side and one's for the output side. And then of course, for whatever all this little regulation is here. Um, so yeah, the output of the actual, so I guess this is kind of the power board and then the other side is kind of the logic and control board. That's where it reads the voltage and the current and stuff like that. And then you got the heatsink there with the MOSFETs under it. You can kind of see the legs of the one there which goes on to that big trace there. Um, and small heat sink there because it's probably pretty efficient. It's only because it doesn't have that s s diode in series whereas the other one, the DP model, has to have the diode in series so it wastes a bit more heat. I got two old diodes. I don't know what those are for. But you have two 470 microfarad 63 volt capacitors in parallel on the output along with the 220 50 volt solid capacitor which is directly on the output. Uh, big ol' inductor there. I think that's basically the same as a DP model. Yeah basically the same. And there's a bug annoying me. I'll be back. Okay. That was annoying. There's a bug flying on my light there. Okay. I think I was talking about the inductor, which is basically the same thing. I haven't measured it or anything. But yeah, then you've got your uh, diode there, which goes from ground to the input side of the inductor. And then you've got three capacitors here on the input. Uh, let's, there we go. You've got 63 volt 100 megafarads, 63 volt 470. So it's a total of 200 Four, five, six, six, seventy microfarads on the input. And you've got a few little bits here. Looks like buck converter and stuff for the actual uh, uh, digital stuff, the microcontroller, the LCD, stuff like that. So yeah. I do notice this little, um, uh, these little pins here. Let's see, I have, what are they, RX on the right of the, in those three, there's RX, ground, and TX going from right to left. Then there's five more little holes, which that center one looks like ground. I don't know if that's standard to anything. Probably something to program it with. That might be interesting. Anybody knows something, let me know. So yeah, kind of an overview of the DPS model. Um, so with this uh, 5005 with the knob a little bit janky, um, what I might do is uh, figure out a way to desolder the knob or the button for this and just solder in an, an external button so that way instead of pushing it down there I press a separate little button to get this guy working again or I'll see if the rotary encoder is 
cheap enough where I can just buy it and replace the whole thing. So yeah, I basically get a free one that works pretty well. Um, so yeah, that's a DPS 5005 taking a look at. Um, where is the other one? Basically the same stuff. It's got the switch mode stuff there. Got a little capacitor there. And then the transistor and diode there. Same current shunt. Probably the same sort of PCB. Only 470 times 250 volt capacitors on the input. So yeah. And have a look at all the DP models. And so, take a more in-depth look at the 30V 12 amp, DPS 30V 12 amp, and see what kind of goodies that this guy has. Stay tuned.